Good morning everyone. So today I just wanted to vlog a bit and show you what my typical day these days looks like. So I am right at the end of my second semester of my master's degree and I have been doing final exams and final projects recently. I have one more exam coming up June 2nd. So I am preparing for that right now and I just wanted to take you with me through the day. All right, so as I'm about to start studying, I would just like to shout out Hi PDF and thank them for sponsoring this video. But I just like to show off some of the features um, using the book that I am studying off of. So the book that I'm using currently is this one. Molecular Neuropharmacology, a foundation for clinical neuroscience. So I'm having an exam on this book. And so basically it's 914 pages, y'all. And I have to read all of this and know the information on this for my exam. So what I'd like to show you is a couple of useful features that I have used for my studying. So as that book is huge, one thing that I can do is compress this PDF. So let's just see how that works. All right, so as you can see, there is three different settings for your compression that you can choose from. I've just gone with the average medium. All right, so there's basically after it uploaded here, I just clicked a button that said compress. And then now here you can see it's compressed from this many megabytes to this many megabytes and then after that I can just download it and it will be a smaller file size. But another feature I would like to highlight that I personally think is quite useful for myself and my studying is this PDF to Word function. So as you can see I have that book that I have been studying off of. Actually I even saw a TikTok video the other day that was explaining how much better Word is for making notes and studying your book materials off of or your slides, your university slides for example. And okay so now the conversion is completed and I'll just click download to get my Word document here. So yeah, that is just what HiPDF does. Here are all of the tools that they offer, all the conversions, and you can do it on your desktop, and they do have a pro version, which costs, and they also have a free version, which you can try out, and everything will be in my description box. So if you are a student like me and need a PDF solution to um, kind of fiddle around with various documents, this is definitely an option. All right, so I just filmed two YouTube videos and I thought I would, that's why there's an outfit change and a hair change, but I just thought I would now go over my personal study plan for today. So as you know from what I just discussed earlier in this video, I had to read this molecular neuropharmacology book. Um, our course for this is kind of weird because the classes actually got canceled for this semester. And so we've had zero classes. So there was either an option to postpone it for next year, or if you wanted to try to get the credits this year, you could also read this book and just take the exam. So I chose to take the exam just to see if I can do well and pass, and then it would lessen the workload for next year. Because a couple of other things got postponed for next year as well because of the the situation of the world right now. So basically what I've been doing is, now this is again a, the PDF that I converted into Word. So what I've been doing is kind of gone chapter by chapter. Just being completely honest, this um, book I think goes into a lot of tiny detail without really explaining the general concept so well. So I've kind of skimmed through each chapter and then made a YouTube playlist um, of videos that go over and explain the gen general definitions and terms of the main themes for each chapter. So I've watched those videos and then I've kind of gone back and um, read the chapter in more detail because I feel like I get more out of the book that way. Actually, I think a more interesting point is how I make notes is via mind maps. And I know a large majority of people absolutely loathe loathe mind maps, 
but personally for me, they help study. So I think taking notes by hand sometimes um, can be really useful for memorization and to remember um, the different terms and how they link together. So what I do is I'll read the chapter, watch my YouTube videos, and as I'm going through, I'll make a mind, one mind map for each chapter. It also helps when you you know, go over your text and you're able to summarize it into something shorter. So I'll show you my mind maps in a second. They're very messy. They're not beautiful to look at at all, but the information is there. So I'll have like the chapter name in the center and then I'll make my mind map surrounding that. So it also summarizes the information. And also if you're revising, you can quickly, you know, look at each point and kind of it jostles your memory. So you can remind, eh, be reminded in that manner as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you my mind maps that I use when I study or that I make for studying. So yes, that is a lot of paper, but this is essentially how I do it. For section one of my book, so that's section one, chapter one, basic principles of neuropharmacology. So that's the chapter name. And then from here, I just go and draw lines to the most important definite or like here's like the definitions here's the most important points in the chapter and then I kind of just build off this one is kind of messy but um, I guess this one's a bit more clear cellular basis for communication so here I've highlighted you know the main points in the chapter and then I kind of build off of those the summaries of each part so in that way I have the whole chapter kind of condensed to one A4 piece of paper and then I had blue tag on these and they were on my wall for a while so they're kind of there for my benefit. Um, these over here are my notes from the YouTube videos that I watched so kind of the summaries that I made for the various topics that I was trying to get a better understanding of in a more simple way since the book was kind of um, dense and I guess things were explained in a not so simple manner um, but yeah I'll, I can show you what the topics are if you're interested if you think this is boring you can just skip a, skip ahead and pass through this part but yeah uh, we covered synaptic transmission signal transduction in the brain uh, part two had excitatory and inhibitory amino acids Widely projecting system monoamines at how do you pronounce that acetylcho as acetylcholine and orexin neuropeptides atypical neurotransmitters and then finally the third section autonomic nervous system neural and neuroendocrine control of the internal milieu uh, pain pain pathways neuroinflammation we have sleep and arousal. We have higher cognitive function and behavioral control, mood and emotion, reinforcement and addictive disorders, schizophrenia and bipolar, almost done here guys, neurodegeneration, seizure disorders, and stroke and migraine. So those are the general topics that I've been studying and the method that I have taken for, um, for most of my exams, because we have book exams these days. So for a lot of my classes, we are required to read a book and the exam will be based on the book that we are assigned. So actually for a lot of my exams, I have been making these kinds of mind maps on every chapter of the book because it helps me kind of summarize and condense the information of the book to, you know, a few a few A4 pieces of paper. So that has been my study technique for my exams in my during my first year of my master's program in neuroscience. Um, if you have any other tips that you could share for me, study techniques, anything that has uh, helped you in particular, let me know in the comments below because I do have another year of master's to complete. Um, but yeah, that is why I have been quite busy this year. I've I've almost done most of my classes this year. I only have three more classes, I think, to do. Granted, I pass all my exams. I only have three more classes next year, plus my thesis, which will take up a large chunk of time. So that's what I'll be doing next year, as long as I finish up my classes for this semester. I'm going to try and do my literature review for my thesis over the summer, so hopefully I get that finished by fall, and then in the fall I can start my um, experiments and my actual study and methods chunk of the uh, thesis 
and then I'll have my few classes in the fall and then spring is mainly finishing up dis not dissertation finishing up my thesis oh my god that's a horrendous angle uh, always when I film on my phone I don't really know where to look so if my eyes are all over the place sorry about that uh, but yeah that is my generic plan and yeah as I said I've been taking it chapter by chapter and kind of making my notes and studying my notes and it does it's really it's a long process so reading a 900 plus page book takes a lot of time I try and do like one chapter per day but I mean sometimes my study schedule kind of extends because like even doing one chapter it just feels like it takes forever so uh, yeah I do try to take breaks so for example I go on walks um, if I'm at my uni dorm I'll go on walks here if I'm at home I'll go on walks with my dog It's a video. <laughs> I also try and do some stretching every day in between my um, studying so my muscles don't get too jammed up and I get at least a little bit of movement there. Some breaks from looking at my computer screen because right now everything's online so it is quite tiring to the eyes looking at your computer all the time especially because I also do YouTube which requires a lot of editing time and staring at the computer as well so I try to kind of take breaks from just staring at screens and looking out my window or going outside or looking at my dog or something else like that so that really helps so yeah I'll check in in a few hours after I'm done doing some notes and we'll pick up from there. Hi guys, so I'm just checking in again. It's now 21.49, so almost 10 o'clock, and I've just been editing my, this video that you're actually watching right now, I'm editing it currently. I um, just finished my little stretch and had some tea, and I am done studying for the day as well. Tomorrow I am going to drive down to because I'm in my uni dorm right now so tomorrow I'm gonna drive to my parents house where my dog is also living so I'm gonna spend the week there before I'm gonna come back here to take my exam to be honest with you I'm really not doing a lot I think a lot of us are kind of just cooped in our houses houses at the moment there's not a lot going on although things are starting to open up uh, June 1st I believe here in Finland Things are, you know, quite quiet, quite <laughs> slow. We just had a lot of hail and snow the last few weeks, and I think they're predicting this following week to be um, close to 20 degrees Celsius, so I think everyone's going to be looking forward to that, although that means also that there's going to be huge crowds outside, which is not good either. But, uh, yeah, I guess this is going to be my life for the next week, so not a lot going on. I hope you guys are all doing well. And that's about it, so thank you for watching. Guess that just about concludes this video, so till next time.